Hi everyone, welcome again. We continue our journey through making our data to talk, to speak to us, because we need to extract information to visualize some important hidden information that is not visualized to our eyes. So we have to use a Cumometrics tool. There are plenty of uh, different tools that we can use for analyzing our data. One of the simplest way to make a calibration or to make a prediction of a certain attribute in such a sample using, using univariate calibration. What is a univariate calibration? It's only to use only one variable, only spectral data at only one wavelength, or even like a spectrophotometer to have uh, absorbance or to have reflectance or to have uh, transmitt transmittance at only wavelength. wavelength. But if you have 100 samples, okay, of transmittance or reflectance, so you should have, at every sample, you should have value of concentration. So we need to use a spectral information to predict all of these uh, chemical composition or the concentration. So we need to use a classical calibration using the univariate analysis, using a single compound to predict the single single compound. This is a, actually, this is a very simple linear regression when you make a comparison between X and Y, between this variable X is the spectral data and this Y is the concentration, where Y is the concentration equal X and X is multiplied by a constant and all both data are uh, summed with a, a constant is A. A is an intercept and B is the slope of all of these lines. And of course, the difference between this point and the prediction line is the residual or the error. Okay, so the quality of the prediction using this model, it is a square root of the squared error between the prediction and the actual data of my concentration. This happened if we have only one variable, only one wavelength, only one detector, only one spectral data at one wavelength. But what happened if we have different wavelengths? We have different variables. That means we have different wavelengths at different bands. And then all of these factors, all of these variables should be used to predict the concentration there are a lot of contribution between the variables or the X variables or the spectral data to predict the same composition, the same concentration for the same compound. If you need to express all of these uh, multiple linear regression, multiple means I have a multi of variables to predict uh, one concentration. So in the, in the univariate, I have only one variable and I have only one slope or one coefficient. But with two variables, for example, I should have two coefficients of prediction or regression and one constant as an intercept. Okay, so we should solve for B coefficient. Once we have the spectral data and we have the concentration, you should obtain the regression coefficient. Regression coefficient means the intercept and the constant multiplied by each spectral data. So I need to know A or B naught. I need to know B1, B2. And if you have five or six variables, you need to know B1 to T5 to B5 and B6 and B10 and so on. So we need to solve for B coefficient. We need to know the beta coefficients used for future samples that is not analyzed yet. So calculations actually is very simple but could be very complex. It depends on you. So you need to choose your track. If you are good enough in mathematics, you can choose to make a calculation by yourself. For example, if we have two variables used for prediction of this concentration, two variables means spectral data at only two of lengths, and these two of lengths should be used for predictions, the concentration of a compound, could be sugar, could be protein, could be water content, whatever. So this is the equation that we need to solve. Y equal A plus B1X1 plus B2X2. 
Then we need to solve to obtain the beta coefficient A, B1, and B2. This is the data. First step, we need to calculate from the spectral of data or from the original data, the raw data, we need to make some calculations. So we can take all of this data to Excel file, for example, and to make, make a calculation for x1 square, x2 square, y, x y, x1, x2, x1, y, x2, y, and so on. And then after this, you make a calculations for a uh, calculation for regression. After making the, all of this calculation of summation of all of these parameters, you can easily go and put these equations to calculate A, B1, and B2. Once we have these parameters, you can make a substitution inside your original equation, this one. This is original equation, then I have this equation. This equation is ready to be used for future samples, for unknown samples. So if you have samples from the same characteristics, from the same population, just introduce your sample on inside this multivariate model. And from this multivariate model, you can make a prediction. The question now, what happened if we have, if we have more than two variables? The situation could be more complicated because I have only two constant in addition to intercept. But if you have three variables, for example, the equation could be extended to this very long and very tedious equation that is very difficult to calculate using a very simple calculations like this because the calculation itself is very complex and very time consuming. But fortunately, we can use matrix. We can use matrix and the matrices to solve these equations. For example, if we have spectral data with more than variables, more than two variables, for example, in this situation is 10 variables, and then this 10, 10 variables, okay, we have 20 samples. So 20 samples and 10 variables used for prediction of concentration for aconistitunes. This concentration could be C or could be Y. And I need to solve this problem. I need to obtain this, this equation but in this situation, I don't have only two sam only two variables. I have n variables. In this example, I have 10 variables. So how we can use, if we arrange the data in a matrix form, shall we able be able to make a calculation using? Yes, of course, because we are, we are solving co for concentration. So concentration equal x multiply by B. This matrix multiply by this matrix give us this matrix. Because I am solving for the B co beta coefficient, we can make an inverse or Z do inverse, okay? Based on the shape of your uh, matrix, the spectral data matrix. So uh, this is a general uh, form of the matrix used to convert the concentration or Y variable because y equal this matrix multiplied by this matrix. If this matrix is a square matrix, we can use the inverse directly. Beta coefficient equal x minus 1 multiplied by y. But if this matrix has more, li more variable less than the samples or less variable less than uh, samples, that means we don't have a square matrix of x. We have a rectangular matrix like this situation 10 variables and 20 samples in this situation you are unable to to use the simple transpose we need to go z to inverse to fake the inverse itself to obtain the beta coefficient is it possible to make these simple calculations either in matlab or uh, excel yes let's go to excel first Okay, to see the same example, okay? And from this example, you, we can uh, make a calculation and then we can uh, know how to analyze. This is, a, for example, this is a X1. This is a X1. And this is a X2. And this is Y. I need to use these two variables to predict the y, okay? So we need to go 
through the data. Okay, and then you can use regression linear or linear regression, and then choose your y variable, and then the x variables. In this situation, we have two variables. Then choose the point where we have to put or the location where, where we put our data, and then we choose all of these collections if you are interested to visualize all of this information. Then you have this data, and from this data, you have the coefficients. Okay, this is the coefficients. You obtain number of samples and the multiple linear coefficients of your data. For, for example, here, if you are interested about the constant, this is the A. For example, you can call this is A or A naught. Okay, and this is should be 1, B1, and this should be B2. This is the, the coefficients that we have, these coefficients. These coefficients could be easily used for prediction for unknown samples. But fortunately, you can use here the predicted values using these coefficients. You can even use the original data. This is the y. This is the original, my original data. And this is the predicted data or predicted y. OK? We can use how close they are to each other if you are interested to to know how these data are related to each other just go and plot all of your data for example we can start from first value at 140 okay and this also we can start from 140 okay then this is the data. This is the actual data or the original data, and this is the predicted data. For example, we can even add trend line, and from this uh, trend line, you can put uh, R square, for example, and the equation. So the R square for prediction using this multilinear models is 0.96. This is how strong this, mo this model could be used for prediction of the variable y using these two variables. It's very efficient and very useful and very easy and straightforward to carry out these calculations using the uh, Excel file. We can even go to uh, Excel to uh, MATLAB take copy from this data then we go to MATLAB and then write this is the data okay equals and something very easy because it is very easy also to import your data to from Excel file, but we need something very fast to do it. And then we can name, this is your data, this is Y, this is the first column, and then X1, X1 is my data for the second column, okay, or rows, okay, second column, Okay, and x2, x2 is my data, okay, or rows for the, the third column, okay. Okay, so I have now y, x1, and x2. Don't forget the equations contain two coefficients, one the first one coefficient for x1 and uh, 
another one is B2 is a coefficient for X2, but you have to consider there is another coefficient for the intercept. That's why you need to prepare your data and from, from this data, you have to, uh, to consider you have coefficient for x1, coefficient for x2, and also coefficients for the b for the intercept. Intercept doesn't contain x, doesn't contain information. That's why we need to add a column that already all of this is one the column, one value. We don't have x variables. That's why we can write x variables. We have ones for the size as a size of x, x1 for example, because x1 and x2 is the same size. Okay. This is the first the first column and then second column is x1, second column is x2, and then close. This is my x. So I have first column is uh, is ones, second column is x1, second third column is x2. Then we can make a prediction. Make a prediction, I can say okay it is y2. Y2 we use this function equals equal regress. So the function that is already used for um, for making multilinear regression between y as a variable okay and x uh, contains a matrix contains the matrix of uh, of the two uh, variables x1 and x2 in addition to the intercept so we can have the beta coefficients if you compare these values okay of beta coefficient with the value we obtained from uh, Excel file, it is the same. So we can use this one. We can use this beta coefficient. Okay, I can even write it is not B2, it is B, beta coefficient. Sorry, it's beta coefficient. We can use these values to make a prediction for your data. For example, we can make a Y2 should equal X times. The coefficient b then this is y2 is the predicted value using this model based on this uh, coefficient we have very simple and very straightforward to obtain or making multilinear regression either using excel or using the matlab next session we are speaking to uh, to speak about something very very important is called principal component analysis Okay, see you in the next presentation.